here, you know, um, got the share in Pennsylvania, but you know, there's just no place like home. That's right. No place like home. And so we've been talking about faith, and we've been talking about um, different aspects of the faith life. And this is, what I'm sharing today I think is probably the most important aspect of the faith life, uh, understanding how to, to receive from God, because this is dealing with love. See, God doesn't just have love. The Bible says that God is love. That's what 1 John talks about, that God is love. And because God is love, you can build a foundation of faith upon that love. It's critical. The, the, the love of God is the very foundation of what our faith is built on. And if you don't understand how much God loves you, and if you don't understand, or, or if you're, maybe your understanding of Father God is warped because of abuse that you've received from parents in the past, or maybe your parents weren't there for you. And, and, and you're like, well, you know, the Bible says God's love, but, you know, um, my parents, they're supposed to be an example of that, and I'm not feeling it from them. Well, you know, sometimes that can really affect your, your faith. Or if you had a parent that was abusive, and, you know, anytime you did something wrong, you know, out comes, you know, they're just going to, you do the slightest thing wrong, they're ready to spank you or something. I mean, there, there's a thing of discipline, and there's another thing of abuse. You know, and, you know, I believe in disciplining your children. The Bible, you know, um, says if you don't discipline your children, it says you literally hate them, you know. So we should be disciplining our children, but we've got to do it, even do that in love. You know, even, even when you have to, you know, um, tan their fanny, <laughs> um, you, you, you still do it with an attitude and heart of love. Amen. And uh, because you don't want to just leave them traumatized either. So, but but see, when people have ex had experiences like this, then a lot of times their picture of God is somewhat warped. They think that God is up there, and every time they they don't do everything perfect. And is there anyone in here who's perfect? Has anyone here reached perfection yet? I know I haven't. But but so so then you're 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 thinking, okay, well, I, I didn't pray enough this week. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. You know, God must just be all angry at me all the time. And and you know that will affect your faith. You know, uh, if, if God's always angry at me, then how can I even pray? How can I ask him for something if I'm always messing up? Well, you know, the Bible tells us to come bully to the very throne room of grace. Hello? We've got to come bully to the very throne room. Why do we need to come bully the throne room of grace? Because we need it. We need, we need uh, his mercy. And, and the Bible says his mercies are new every morning. Amen? And I'm glad we get a fresh supply of them. Really, they're new every moment. We're in the New Testament. God's grace is just poured out abundantly upon us. And so we've got to realize that, that God is love. That's who He is. It, God doesn't just have love. God is love. And so the, the title of this message is Love with Expectation. Love with Expectation. Because we know that God loves us, we expect Him to be good to us. Because we know that God is, loves us, we expect Him to be there for us when we're going through things. See, our faith works by love. Love is the very foundation of faith. It's because it causes stability and confidence in the faithfulness of God. That's, you know, if I know my parents love me, then I know they're not going to abuse me. I know they're not going to just leave me on the side of the road. I know they're going to be there to take care of me when things are going on. When I'm hurting, they're there to put me on their lap. And, and you know, I remember as, as a child, you know, I, I was the king of skin knees. I left skin all over the pavement. Anyone ever, can anyone relate here? No. You know, <laughs> Robert's like, well, did you do skateboarding, Robert? Yeah. You, you know, I, I did some of that, too, until I got smart enough to quit that. But, you know, you're skating along, and, and you hit one little pebble. One little pebble. The skateboard goes that way, and you're still going forward. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I wasn't smart enough to, to get knee pads. So, you know, my jeans took a beating. Let's put it that way. But, but you know, when I would get hurt, my parents, they would take care of me. They would uh, be there for me. And so, you know, because they love me. 
And so when we know that God loves us, then we know that he's going to be there for us. No matter what we're going through, no matter what obstacles we're facing, we know our Father God is there for us. We are not alone in it. Amen? And, and so in Galatians 5, 6, it says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. The natural doesn't mean anything, whether you're, whether you're Jew or whether you're Gentile, basically, that's what it's saying. But what does avail is faith working through love. And that's, that's the key. Your faith works because of love. Love is what causes your faith to function. And so you, you can't trust, if you, if you don't think someone loves you, then how are you going to trust them? You know, it's important. I know uh, with Norma and I, we're coming up on 22 years. Yay. 22 years of marriage. And I trust Norma because I know that she loves me. So I, I don't have to call her every five minutes when she's out. If, if, if I tell her that I'm going fishing, she knows that I'm going fishing. Plus, she knows when I come home because I sure smell like it. But, uh, you know, she, first thing she says is, to the shower. <laughs> you know? uh, I don't get a kiss until I get a shower, right? But, uh, it, but see, the bottom line is I trust her because I know that she loves me. I, I know that she's not going to um, break our marriage covenant because she loves me. And so, because I know that, I can trust her. When she goes away for a weekend to a woman's function, I don't, you know, I don't call her every five, ten minutes. Why? Because I know where she's at. I know what she's doing. Amen? Amen. And so when we know that God loves us, that promotes trust. God's there for us. He's helping us. See, faith is confident expectation. That's what faith is. See, I expect things of Norma because I know she loves me. We expect things from God. Why? Because He's our loving Heavenly Father. Amen. The Bible says He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Amen? Amen. He, he's given us everything we need to succeed. Why? Because He loves us. That's why. And so, in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it says, And now abide faith, hope, and love. These three. But the greatest of these is love. And the importance of love is this. You, you can think about it like this. It's like a building, okay? Faith is on top, there's hope, and then love would be the foundation. And that's the way it works. So when, when I go to the hospital, or when I'm ministering to someone, and they're struggling with their faith, I don't say, what's wrong with you? Where's your faith at? You, you call yourself a Christian? Where, what's up with you? The thing that I do is I start talking to them about how much God loves them, and how God is you know, there for them. He's, he's watching over them. And he, he, his heart is just open up to them. And when I do that, all of a sudden, that, that creates a foundation for them to build hope. Well, God loves me, so then all of a sudden, hope starts to grow out of it. And, well, if God loves me, then, then he's, he's going to take care of me. You know what hope is? Hope is a picture of, of good. It's a, it's a future picture of, of having victory. You know, when you have hope, you, you, you see the victory. When you have a lack of hope, when, when you have discouragement, that, that's because you're seeing defeat. Well, we have a God who is, he's the creator of the universe. And he loves us, so he's there to take care of us. Amen? Amen. And so, so when I'm ministering to people, and, and I, I, all of a sudden hope begins to take hold of them, well, you know, faith is the substance of what? Things hoped for, right? The evidence of things not seen. So faith comes, it springs out of the things we hope for. But, but love is the reason why we have the hope in the first place. So, so when we're ministering to people and, and we want to build their faith up, what, the way we do it is by expressing how much God loves them. And then, then hope will spring up and then faith will begin to, to manifest. And, and, you know, that's the, the, such a critical thing. The Bible says that Sarah, she judged God, what? Faithful who had promised. She made a judgment about God's faithfulness. Why? Because she knew God loved her. God had proven himself to her and Abraham over and over again, and God was going to prove himself again. Amen? Amen. And so, you know, that love is the very foundation of your faith. We know uh, in, well, especially in... Um, 
in California, because there's other countries that, that have earthquakes and stuff, but California, they have huge skyscrapers. And, and you know, when you look at the technology, they, these buildings are made to sway. They're, they are not just rigid and hard. They're foundations. They, they actually, I saw that they have rollers on some of them. I think even some of them have some kind of spring mechanism. And they're made to actually sway a little. Now, maybe not quite that much, you know. But they're made to give a little bit when, when the foundation is being shaken by an earthquake. And that's the way it is with us. You know, earthquakes. And I, when I say earthquakes, I'm talking about things in our lives, things aren't always perfect. Things, you know, we deal with issues and sometimes it feels like our world is falling apart. Can anyone relate to that? Yeah. I've been there. You know, I know. But you know what? God, His foundation of love is what keeps us stable, is what keeps us from falling apart when, when our whole world is shaking around us. And so, you know, the love of God makes us earthquake proof. Amen? Amen. 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 I know, um, you know, people are going through struggles. People are dealing with things. Let's build a foundation of love in which faith will spring forth from it. Amen. See, love is, is the very foundation of the gospel. We know that from John 3.16, for God so what? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The very foundation of the Bible is God's love. God loves us, so He gave us His best. And if He gave us His best, He'll give us the rest. Amen. You know, God, God's not withholding anything from us. If, if He didn't spare His own Son, how much more freely will He give us all things Amen. to enjoy? Amen. Amen? Amen. God is so good. Yeah. And, and it's all based on His love. Amen. Grace, is, it, it springs out of God's love. See, um, if, you're, if you're a law person and you live by, by law, then you're rigid. When the foundation, when, when everything starts going, it, it falls apart. But but love is that that's where grace springs out of, and that's what keeps you stable, even when everything else is going crazy. It's the love of God. Faith works by love. Amen. Faith works through love. Amen? Amen. Jesus, he taught about faith. He taught he taught people faith by teaching them about his God's love and his faithfulness. And why don't we turn real quick to Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 22. No, I'm sorry, 25. Matthew 6, 25 says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. See, worry is the opposite of faith. And so Jesus is saying, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food? And the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. Now, he, now Jesus is painting a picture here of things that we might think are very insignificant. And he's saying, if God's taking care of these little insignificant things, how much more value are, are you? I mean, Jesus paid a price for us. He, I mean, he, he, he paid his life for us. It's, it's more valuable than silver or gold. And, you know... The way you put a value on something is how much someone is willing to spend on it. Well, if, if God spent Jesus on us at the cross, then how valuable are we to God? It's, we're pretty valuable. If people aren't willing to spend anything on something, then it, it has no value. But God gave us His best. That's because he, he values us that much. He loves us that much. Amen? He, so Jesus said, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit or, to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon, all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is today, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O, o you of little faith? So what he's doing is he's saying, you know, he's saying, you are so valuable to God. God takes care of the little things. And so how much more is he going to take care of you? Amen? 
He's telling them how much God loves them. And that's, that's what will bring faith. That's what will help faith to, to spring forth. Therefore, verse 31, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things that Gentiles see, for your heavenly Father, He knows that you have need of all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God, His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is, um, is its own trouble. And so you can just see that Jesus, in order to teach His people faith, he was teaching them about God's faithfulness and God's love and how God takes care of the little things, you know, and how much value they have. And I'm here to tell you that you are valuable to God. Amen. God values you. You mean a lot to Him. Amen. Amen. Look what He spent to get you. Amen. Amen. You're valuable. Hallelujah. In Matthew 7, starting in verse 7, it says, and this is Jesus, he's saying, and this is in the area of prayer, he's saying, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find not, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. That's, that's just showing the attitude of God. God is not up there holding things back, and, and, and he's not stingy. He's not saying, oh, well, you know. He just didn't do good enough today, so I'm just going to withhold everything. God is not a miser. God is a giver. Amen. Amen? Amen? And it says, Or what man is there among you? If his son asks for bread, we give him a stone. Or if he asks for a fish, we give him a serpent. If you, if you then, being evil, he's saying, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're flawed. We have problems. There's issues with us. If we're wanting to do good things for our natural children, how much more would your Heavenly Father, want to, who, who's, who's love, want to bless you and touch you? I mean, you can put faith in a God like that. Amen? You can put faith in a God that just, He, he, he loves us so much. I mean, my parents love me, but, but their love for me does not even come close to comparing to what God's love is for. Amen? Amen? And I, I believe that for you as well. And it says, if you've been evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. So he's saying, you know, he's just sharing the, the big giant heart of God. That God is such a giver. God is a God of love. And when we get a revelation of that, then it's easy to believe God. You can believe God because of how good He is. That He promised to always be there for us. Amen? Amen. Amen. God is so good. Amen. See, when we know God cares, we know that He will be there. When we know God cares, we know that He will be there. In Romans chapter 8, starting in verse 31, says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Amen? Let, let's say that as, as a church. If God is for us, who can be against us? Or you can put it this way. If God is for us, it makes no difference who's against us. Hallelujah. See, He did not spare, He who did not spare us, us but delivered Him up for us all. How shall we not with Him also freely give us what? All things. So, so you know, when Jesus was put on, on the cross. That's like, like God saying, you know what? I put him on the table. Everything else is on the table. All the blessings are on the table. I'm going to take care of you. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him amen. who loves us. Him who loved us. Amen. Well, why are we conquerors? Because God loves us. 
For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from Amen. the love of God, which is in Christ Amen. Jesus our Lord. Amen. Nothing can separate you from his love. Nothing can. Even those who choose to go to hell, God still loves them. God loves everyone. Even if you choose to, to, to be separated eternally from God, you, you say, you know what, I'm not going to accept His love. God still loves you. God loved the world that didn't love Him. Amen? Amen. And praise God, how much more does He even love His children? I mean, we're His kids. Amen? We say, I'm a father. He's our daddy. Amen. 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 I'm telling you, you get a revelation of this. It it makes believing God easy. Yeah. You know, you believe the bigness of God, the goodness of God. Why? Because he, he's my daddy. Amen. That's my prayer for us as a church is to get a revelation of just the love of God. Amen. The Bible says that when we get a revelation of the love of God, we get full of Him. You know, that we would we would know the love of God. What is the width, and the depth, the, the length, the height? To know the very love of God. Which surpasses all knowledge that we might be filled with what? All the fullness of God. Why? Because God is love. The more love you understand, the more revelation of love you get, the more God can pour into your life. I think a lot of times we hinder God because we don't realize how much He loves us. And the more we understand that, the more we're open. We're, it's, it's easy for you to be open to someone who loves you. Amen? Because, you know, when, when, you, when you have doubts about someone loving you, you put a, a, a wall up. Anyone here ever uh, experienced that where someone puts a wall up? They got, like, say, offended with you, and they'll put that wall up? They're, they're not open to, to receiving from you anymore. Well, when, when we are, are open to the love of God, all of a sudden what happens is we're wide open to everything God has for us. We trust them. You know, we, we don't put walls up. We're not preventing Him from reaching our hearts. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. See, nothing can separate us from God's love, so we can count on Him to help us. In Psalm 23, 1, 1 through 6, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now, why will we fear no evil? Well, I'm so glad God answers, answers that right here. For you are with me. Whatever you're going through, God is with you every step of the, of the way. It doesn't matter what your doctors are telling you. It doesn't matter what your bankers telling you. I'm telling you, God is there. God is on the throne. And nothing, is, he's not up there scratching his head going, what am I going to do? You know, He's got the answer. And then with God, all things are possible. And the Bible says all things are possible to those who believe. Amen. 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 Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They're not beating me. They comfort me. What? Why? Because a shepherd uses that to protect the sheep. He uses that if, if, a, if a lion or a bear or, or whatever comes up, he's using that as a club. It becomes a club then, you know, or whatever he needs it to be. And it, it says you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Why? Because God is with me. God is taking care of me. We know the story with, about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We know that, that they failed to worship the, the golden idol. They refused to do that. So, so King Nebuchadnezzar, what did he do? He threw them in the burning, fiery furnace. And when he did that, you know, they weren't even, the only thing that burned off of them was the ropes. They didn't even smell like smoke. And there was a fourth man in the furnace with them. God, it doesn't matter what you're going through. There is a fourth man in the furnace Amen. with you. God is there with you. He will take care of you. It doesn't matter if it seems like everything is burning down around you. God is there. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Amen. God will take care of you Amen. when it just seems like the darkest night, when it seems like everyone's forsaken you, when it seems like 
all the options have run out. God makes a way. God opens the door. God will open up the Red Sea and you'll go across on dry land. God will provide. God will give you that one stone to take down the giant. It doesn't matter what you're encountering. God is bigger than anything. Amen. 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 And, and you know, that, that song, you know, eventually God is bigger than what? The boogeyman, right? Amen. And Godzilla and all those other things. God is bigger. Amen. My God is bigger than any mountain that will ever come, you know, and try to, to uh, keep me from pursuing Him or keep me from accomplishing what God's called me to accomplish. You know, we, we speak to the mountain because we believe God. We shout grace to the mountain. Amen. Amen. And where do we get the grace at? God. We come to the very throne of grace. You get the grace, you, you shout grace to the mountain. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. And, and so, so we know that God, He is that fourth man in the furnace. He's there taking care of us every step of the way. Amen. Isaiah 43, 2, 2 and 3 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Amen. Your Savior. See, Jesus didn't just come to the earth to save us from our sins. He came to the earth to be our perpetual Savior. He, he wasn't just the Savior at the cross. He's my Savior today. He's, he saves me from the from the, the, the enemy when he comes at me. The Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against them. Mm -hmm. God is with me. What, whatever the devil's thrown at me, whatever fiery darts he's thrown at me, God is there protecting me. He's keeping me. He, he's helping me to rise above anything that the devil tries to push on me. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. You know, in, in, in Joshua, well, in the book of Joshua, we read um, in Joshua 5, and I don't have that up there, but Joshua 5, 13 through 15, this is where Joshua, he, he just became the leader of Israel. Moses died, and, and it was up to Joshua, the apprentice, to take his place. And so, so in the very first book of Joshua, the very first book of, of, of the chap, very first chapter of the book of Joshua, I'll get it out, um, God was saying, just as I was with Moses, I'll be with you. Amen? He said, no man's going to be able to stand in front of you, and, and everywhere you go, you're going to prosper. Everywhere your foot goes, it's going to be yours. Hallelujah. Now, as a, as, as a brand new leader of the, the children of Israel, I'm sure he was like, okay, Moses was the star. You know, Moses is the one who brought water out of the rocks. Moses is the one who, who commanded the Red Sea to open, and and all these things, all these miracles came through Moses. And, and now Joshua's, you know, he's got it. He's next man in command. And, and you know, I, if I was Joshua, I'd be like, okay, what do I do now? And so God, what does he do? He encourages him. In the very first chapter, he's saying, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm taking care of you. No matter what you do, just know I will never leave you nor forsake you. And so we can see that in Joshua um, 5, 13 through 15. This is where they were just ready to, to go into the promised land. They're, what they're doing is they're getting ready to go, and they're getting ready to see the walls of Jericho come crashing down. And, and so what happened was, in, in Jericho, their walls were thick. Their walls, they, that was an invincible fortress. And yet, the children of Israel, they, they just have very basic weapons. And, you know, it didn't look like it was even possible for them to win a victory like that. Even getting in there was impossible. But God made the impossible possible. Hallelujah. And so, so, so they're getting ready to, to go, and they're getting ready to circle Jericho one time for six days. Each day they would go out one time and go around. The, the seventh day they went around it seven times, and then they shouted, and the walls came down. Praise God. But, but so he's standing there, and he sees this soldier, this warrior, with his sword withdrawn. He's like, whoa. And, and he, he saw him as like an angel. And, and really, it was, it was more than an angel. It was God himself. It was the commander-in-chief. 
And, and the thing he asked them is, the question he asked them was, are you for us or for our adversaries? I mean, that's a good thing to know. When, when, when you're looking going, man, this guy is hulking. He's big. He's massive. He's got his sword drawn. Who are you with? Who are you for? And, and, you know, God had already promised him that he would be with him. He would never forsake him. He would never leave him. God was with him in the battle. God will be with you in your battle. The walls of Jericho, things that, that seem impossible for you, they will come down because God is faithful. And God is not letting you do this alone. You are always there with him. He is always there with you. Greater is he who is in you than he is in the world. You carry the creator of the universe on the inside of you. The, the, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. Amen. Amen. You are more than conquerors through Christ. You're victorious. And why? Because God loved us so much. Amen. God's taken care of us. God promised to never leave us. Hallelujah. In Hebrews 5, 13. And, and, and um, sorry, Hebrews 13. Verses five, five the, towards the end of verse 5 and 6. It says, For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can boldly say, we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my healer. The Lord is my deliverer. The Lord is my preserver. The Lord is my comforter. The Lord has taken care of me every single week. Why? Why can I say that? Because God promised me that He would never leave me nor forsake me. You can, you can take that to the bank. Amen. God will make good on that. And you know what? You can. This is what we base our confessions on: is knowing that God is there. God has taken care of us. And so, because He's promised us that, now we can proclaim. See, that's the confession of faith. We're only saying what God says. Amen. If God says, by stripes you're healed, then you need to agree with God and say, by stripes I'm healed. If God says that, that he's providing all your needs according to his riches and glory, then you need to agree with God and say, you know what? God's taking care of me. He's providing for me. Amen? Amen. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. God is so faithful. In and, and, and Mark chapter 4, 35. Glory to God. 435. And, and this is, this is a, a, an interesting story. This is when the disciples were out. And Jesus told them to, you know, he said, we're going to go over and we're going to cross the other side. So they're, they're, on, they're on a boat. And it says, on the same day, when the evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. Now isn't that cool? They, Jesus is in the boat. Amen. They, they took him with them as he was. Well, what was he? The Savior of the world. What was he? The one who, who um, you know, turned water into wine. The one who healed the lepers. The one who, who delivered people from their diseases. The one who cast out demons. The one who set the captives free. They took him as he was. Amen. We need to take God as he is. Find out in the word of God who he is. And take him with you everywhere you go. Amen. Amen. And it says, they took him with them in the boat as he was. And the other little boats were also with them. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat. And, and so, so it was already filling. So they're like, man, we're going down. What are we going to do? But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. Now, he must have had a water bed, right? <laughs> so, so, so uh, it says here, And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And that's the question that many of us ask. Is You know, when we're going through things, God, do you see what's going on? Do you care what's going on? The boat's filling up. We're going down. And, and you know what? God's saying, I'm with you. You're not going down because I'm in the boat. Amen. I'm taking care of you. Then he, then he arose and he rebuked the storm and said to, to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, 
Who can this be? See, they really didn't have a revelation of Jesus at that point. Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? And, and the, the bottom line is this. He was there with them. That boat was not going down. Amen. And, and you have the greater one on the inside of you. Amen. The Bible says greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. You, you've got everything you need to succeed right there on the inside of you. Every step you take, God's taking a step with you because he lives on the inside. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? We, we, we contain the presence of Almighty God on the inside of us. And he will not let us down. He will take care of us. Amen? Amen? And the question that they had is, don't you care? And I'm here to tell you today, God cares. Amen. God loves you, and God is going to be there for you, no matter what it looks like. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Casting all your care upon Him because He cares for you. Amen? Because He cares, He will be there. Casting all your care upon Him because why? He cares for you. He loves you. Amen. He's there for you every step of the way. Yes. Hallelujah. See, love is the very foundation of faith because perfect love Actually, cast out fear. The more you understand the love of God, the, the fear has to leave. It, it, the love of God repels fear. And that in, in 1 John, this is the last scripture. I'm going to just close it with this one. 1 John 4, 17 and 18. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear, because love involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. That word perfect means mature. So the more we mature in love, the more we're going to be able to stand, and, and whatever comes upon us, we'll be able to stand strong and, and, and overcome it. You know, it's really interesting. Um, the, the disciple who penned this, you know, the Apostle John, that, that it said that, that they were trying to take him out. They were trying to, to martyr him just like all the other disciples. And they, they put him into boiling oil. And he walked out of it. And they couldn't kill him, so they decided they were just going to put him on an island. And, you know, because they didn't know what else to do with him. But, you know, he had such a revelation, think about this, he had such a revelation of God's love that he was just so saturated with God. And God protected him. I'm just here to tell you today that the more we get a revelation of God's love, the more we'll be able to stand and believe God for whatever comes our way. Amen? It doesn't matter what the devil throws at us. The love of God will repel it. The love of God will repel the fear. It will repel the enemy. And so I just want to encourage you today that God loves you. God's taking care of you. And he promised that no matter what you ever go through, he will be there with you. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you, Lord, for the revelation of your love. And Father, I just ask that you give us a greater understanding, a greater revelation of your love. Lord, that we would know what is the width, the length, the, the depth, the height, to know the very love of God, which surpasses all understanding, that we might be filled with all the fullness of you. We thank you for that. Lord, we give you the praise for it. Lord, we thank you that, that we can be confident that you're our sure foundation. No matter whatever comes before us, Lord, we know we can stand on you. You are our, our foundation. You're our rock, and you are love. Yes. And we give you the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for it. For our faith is based on the foundation of your love. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.